Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally and this is Secret Life of a Seamstress. I hope you're all doing really well. In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you five sewing patterns that I would like to sew for my own wardrobe this upcoming spring summer 2023. So if you've followed me for a while you know that I do like to make these videos. I think I've made a similar video to this for the last couple of years. I did make one back in um, autumn time talking all about five patterns that I'd like to sew for myself for my autumn and winter wardrobe. So I'm going to go through that video and the things that I said I would like to make in a minute and see which ones have happened and which ones haven't yet. Um, but yeah, I was really excited to make this video today. So we are coming up towards the end of March here in the UK and technically it should be warming up, although there isn't any sign of that at the moment. <laughs> We've had a lot of rain and actually some snow as well, but I'm really, really wanting that warmer weather now so that I can actually sew and wear some spring and summer garments. So just in the usual way that I have done in the past, I'm going to share with you five patterns that have caught my eye that I'd like to sew and just talk a little bit about the pattern and about how I would plan to wear it and use it in my own wardrobe. And then a couple of fabric examples of um, fabrics that I would like to use to make the garment up with. So before I get into the new patterns, let's quickly take a look back at my autumn and winter five sewing patterns. So in my autumn and winter video, I had a trench coat and I decided to sew the Jack Trench by Ready to Sew. I also had a new sweatshirt dress pattern and at that time I'd chosen the Anderson sweater dress by Stylark. I also had a new shirt dress and I'd chosen to sew the Tildy shirt dress by Atelier Dupe. I had a pair of jeans, which were the Jessa jeans by Tilly and the Buttons and also a new blouse which I'd chosen to be the Anthea blouse by Anna Allen. And as a bonus I included a knitting pattern and I wanted to knit another stripy sweater. So I've not done too badly with my list actually. I've made my trench coat which was probably the biggest one on the list. So I did end up sewing the Jack Trench by Ready to Sew. It was an amazing project and it taught me so much. It was probably the most difficult and challenging thing I've sewn to date but it's also the garment that I'm most proud of so I'm really glad that I did challenge myself um, and decide to go for it and um, make a trench style coat this autumn and winter time. So for a sweatshirt dress I didn't end up making the Anderson sweatshirt dress by Stylark but instead I ended up making the Southbank sweater dress by Nina Lee and I absolutely love that pattern as you'll know I've made three versions of it so far and I do have plans to make a top version as well so I think at the moment that pattern is suiting me better than the Anderson sweatshirt dress but I have bought that pattern and it's definitely going to be on my to sew list at some point in the future. I also had the Tildy shirt dress which I have made, I really enjoyed sewing up, it was a lovely pattern. There are a few tweaks and changes that I need to make to that dress just to make the fit right for me but overall I'm really pleased with that dress and I'm really glad to have given it a go. I did film that as a sew along so I'll link that video down below if you're interested. And the other thing that I got made from my list was the Zerulum sweater by We Are Knitters. So this one was my stripy knitted sweater that I wanted to get made for my autumn wardrobe so I did get that one knitted up. It was a really simple um, knitted jumper to make. It was knit flat um, and yeah, it came together really quickly. I think it only took me a month or so to knit. So I have two things left on my autumn and winter sewing list that I still need to get around to making. One of them is the Anthea blouse, which I'm all ready to go with actually. I've just got to get on with it. I do think that the last two on my list from autumn and winter time will be just as good going into spring as they were or would have been going into autumn and winter so I think it's okay that I still have them to do. And the other thing which is going to be more of a challenge is my Jessa jeans by Tilly and the Buttons but I actually really want to get on with those soon and I'm hoping to make a start on those next week because I know that there is going to be a bit of fitting and things involved and techniques that I've um, yet to do like sewing a zipper fly and things like that so I think that's why mentally I've been putting that one off. So that's where I got to with my autumn and winter list um, but I couldn't help myself I had to make a spring and summer list as well so I'm really excited to share with you what I have on my list today. 
So first on my list for spring and summer is actually going to be another jacket. So this year I did want to kind of challenge myself a little bit more with my sewing makes and I wanted to think a little bit more about what was going to really work in my wardrobe as you'll know if you follow me a little while. So I've really enjoyed recently sewing jackets and also shackets and things like I'm wearing today that are really casual and just work really well in your wardrobe so you can wear them over things and just throw them on. They go over dresses, over leggings, over trousers and anything else you might be wearing. Um, and I really, as I say, enjoyed sewing up my trench coat. So I have been on the lookout for another jacket pattern that I could make and the Ilford jacket has kind of been on my radar for a while. I've always liked the style of it. So if you've not seen the pattern, it's a really boxy style jacket. It has a collar. You can make it cropped or you can make it long. Um, there are some lovely patch pockets on there, um, some big chunky buttons. You could make the sleeves with um, puffs and sort of opening cuffs <laughs> or you can just have the sleeves straight. So yeah, I really do like the style of this one and I've seen loads of lovely versions around on Instagram and everywhere else of people that have made up this jacket and it just looks really lovely. So I thought maybe for this season it was time that I gave the Ilford jacket a go. I really like this one because you can make it look so different depending on which fabric you use. So I would really like mine to be a kind of light outerwear jacket and in my head I have a khaki twill kind of fabric I think that would look really nice and I think that would work really well in my wardrobe. For me personally I would be wearing this as the kind of jacket that I could wear really casually. I tend to dress quite casually and I think a jacket like this would just work really nicely say with a pair of jeans and trainers or even leggings. So in terms of fabrics that I've seen to make this jacket I really would like a khaki colour I think that would work well in my wardrobe and I do like the idea of making this with quite a medium to heavyweight twill fabric. I think that will work really nicely. This jacket could work so well in so many different fabrics though. Obviously you could make it in a denim, you could make it in a corduroy. Another fabric that keeps catching my eye actually is this Mind the Maker Felma pre-quilted fabric. So I love the look of this one and I was half wondering whether I could make an Ilford jacket in that quilted fabric. So that's something to think about as well. I'm not quite sure yet. If you've made the Ilford jacket, let me know down below what fabric you made it from and let me know any tips or tricks about that pattern um, that might help me along the way. Next on my list for things to sew for summertime this year is the Marnie blouse by Tilly and the Buttons. When the Marnie blouse and dress came out, I really wasn't that fussed about it at all. I thought it was way too frilly and way too flouncy. I didn't really like the look of it, I didn't really think it would suit me. But as happens so often in the sewing world, I've just seen so many different lovely versions. I was watching Atelier of the Buttons, either YouTube video or just a reel on Instagram, I can't remember, where Abby was sharing all of her different versions of the Marnie blouse and they just looked so lovely. I thought I had to maybe give it a go. If you've not seen the Marnie blouse before by Tilling the Buttons, it's a really floaty, swishy style um, peasant type blouse, I guess. It's really kind of boho, with lots of frills, lots of gathering. There are some tucks that you can do as well if you want to, or you can have it slightly plainer um, and just have a frill to the shoulder. The sleeves are really interesting on this one. So the sleeves are sewn in two parts. And the top of the sleeve is quite plain and then the bottom of the sleeve is fuller. I really like the look of the construction of the Marnie blouse as well. I've made a similar dress to this for my daughter in the past or what I can gather of how the Marnie is made anyway. It looks as though it's sewn in different panels. Um, and then a frill is inserted into the front panels of the blouse. So yeah, it does look a really interesting one to sew. You can add in the pin tucks if you want to, and there's also a higher frill collar that you can make as well to the blouse. So there are no fastenings in this. I believe it opens at the back with a keyhole tie, or you can make a little button loop and open it that way. But because the blouse is quite big and oversized, it doesn't need any buttons or any zips or fastenings or anything like that. And I can't get the idea out of my head of sewing this blouse from a nice floaty white dobby cotton or viscose and I think that would be so pretty and so summery. My idea is that I would make a white or an ivory coloured version of the blouse. I would go for the plainer version of the blouse. 
So I wouldn't do any of the pin tucks or anything like that and I wouldn't have the high collar. I'd just go for the plain round neck and the sort of plainer style just with the shoulder frills. And I think that would look really nice with skinny jeans or even wide leg trousers. You could tuck it in so that it's um, a little bit more fitted around the waist. I think it would look nice with a pair of shorts as well and I just think it would go with so many different things. So that's my plan for that blouse. And I do have a couple of fabrics in mind um, that I think would work really nicely for this. I have a lovely favorite fabric from Atelier Brunette, um, one of their Viscose Dobby fabrics, which I've used for a few things in the past. And I can't help but think that that fabric again would suit this blouse really nicely. It's really lovely and floaty, lovely to work with, and it's really soft to wear as well. Meat Milk also have a really lovely viscose fabric with tensile, which I've seen on Sew Me Sunshine, and it looks as though it's got a little bit of texture to it as well. And I think with the tensile, it would drape really nicely. Um, so that's another one that's caught my eye and it would be something different from the Atelier Brunette that I have used quite a few times in the past. But that's a really nice one too. Obviously the Marnie blouse can be sewn in so many different types of fabric. It would look as lovely in a printed fabric as it would in a plain. But I think if you are going to be sewing all the tucks and the little details in the Marnie, then it's probably best to go for something plainer or more plain so that you can see all the details in it. So yeah, this one is on my list for spring and summer as well. This section of the video is sponsored by Serious Readers. You'll probably remember that back in the autumn time, I was kindly given the chance to test out one of the Serious Readers Serious Light range. I'm still really enjoying using it. So I mainly use my light in the living room in the evening time when I do my more close up crafting work like knitting, crochet, and I also use it for reading as well. Serious Readers offer an amazing range of custom built lights and not only work brilliantly, but also look really good as well. So you can choose from a floor standing light or a desk lamp with lots of different colors and different finishes as well. So you can have a light or heavyweight base, or you can have a black, silver or gold finish too. Serious lights are fitted with an adjustable beam width function and a dimmer switch as well. So it's really good for getting just the right focus for whatever close up work you might be doing. I tend to get up quite early in the mornings before everyone else is up and it's still quite dark here in the morning in the UK. I do a bit of reading in the morning, so it's really good to just pop my serious light on in the morning and see exactly what I am reading without putting all the big lights on and disturbing the rest of the house. So do pop over to the Serious Readers website and just have a look at the amazing range of lights they have available. Each light is custom built, so you get exactly the right fit for you and also the right design for you as well, something that's gonna fit into your lifestyle and also your home. If you do decide to order a light, you can actually use my code to claim yourself a free compact light like this one here. So as with all the other serious lights, this one it is bendable. So you can bend the neck of it to get just the right angle that you need for any close up work that you might be doing. It's really tiny and it packs away into a small bag. So it's great for transporting around the house and taking it wherever you might need it. I'll leave all of the details on my code below and I hope you'll pop over and give them a look. Next on my list is actually a pair of pyjamas. So I do love sewing pyjamas and I do need some for the summertime as well. So I recently came across this pattern when I was actually writing one of my articles for Threads Monthly. And um, it's one of Megan Nielsen's patterns that I haven't seen around as much as her other ones. <laughs> So it's the reef camisole and shorts pattern by Megan Nilsson. So this one is an interesting one because it can be worn as sleepwear, but it can also be worn as loungewear as well, the pattern says. So there are a couple of different options or ways that you can sew this. It's a really lovely casual style pyjama set. And what drew me to it really is that it was really light and really pretty, good for wearing in warm weather, warm nights, but it actually has quite a lot of nice coverage to it as well. So it's not too skimpy. You'd feel happy um, wearing it around the house, <laughs> for example, um, you know, without it being too revealing or anything. 
So there are a couple of different options that you can sew with this pattern. It comes with a lovely v-neck style camisole and the back of this camisole is really interesting. And then it has a crossover yoke detail, which I think looks really pretty. And it just adds a little bit of interest to an otherwise quite plain pattern. But when it comes to the shorts, you can either make them straight shorts or you can make them slightly curved. But yeah, that's just a couple of different options that you can um, use to tweak and change the pattern. So I think I would sew this pair of pyjamas from something like a viscose linen. I don't think I would go full viscose because I think that can be quite sweaty <laughs> at night time. So I think if you have a bit of linen or a bit of cotton in pyjamas, it works really nicely. I'm not always a fan of wearing 100% cotton. I do feel as though it's a little bit too structured, particularly for nightwear. So I would definitely be looking for something with a little bit of drape in it, but something that's quite breathable as well. So I found a couple of viscose linen fabrics that I think would work really nicely for this pyjama set. And on the Fabric Godmother website, they actually have loads of different viscose linens, but I was really drawn to these cherry print um, viscose linens. I love this one, it looks really vintage, but this one's actually currently out of stock, but it's really pretty and I thought it would work really nicely as a cute pair of pyjamas. They also have this really retro floral print that I think would work really nicely, but equally I think this set would look really nice just sewn up um, in a plain viscose linen. I did find as well another really nice meat milk fabric that I thought would work really well for these pyjamas, and this is a tensile seersucker. So the fabric looks as though it's got a really nice texture to it, it's quite bumpy, but I think because of the tensile in it, it would be a little bit more drapey than say a solid cotton and I think that would work really nicely. So those are my options for that nightwear set. It looks really nice on the model wearing it with a pair of trainers as well. So there is the option to wear it as loungewear as well as nightwear. Next on my list is of course a dress. I had to include a dress <laughs> and the dress that I've chosen this time is actually a sew over it pattern which I'm really pleased about because I haven't sewn a sew over it pattern for years and that is the Pippa dress. So you probably have seen the Pippa dress, it's one of sew over its recent releases, uh, pattern releases. And it's a really interesting style dress, I think. It has this really pretty asymmetrical button detail running down the front of the dress with a nice side split. You can make quite a lot of different variations of this dress, so you can have it short, midi, or even maxi length. You can make it with short sleeves, long sleeves, or balloon sleeves as well. So there are quite a few different options of ways that you can sew this dress. I think for me, I would really like to sew a short sleeved version of this dress and have it midi length because I really like the midi length with the slit at the front. The good thing about this dress is actually that you don't have to make buttonholes for it. So the buttons are actually sewn on. So the dress is actually quite fitted. It has bust darts and waist darts and then it fastens at the side with an invisible zip which is actually kind of worse for me because I would much rather make a buttonhole than I would fit an invisible zip. <laughs> I think what I would like to sew this dress from is of course a pretty ditzy floral viscose fabric. So I think on the high street pastel colours are really in at the moment. So really pale sort of baby blues and baby pinks and things like that. But I think for me I'm not quite sure those colours work. I really do like blue at the moment, so I've had a look at some blue floral fabrics that I've seen around and I'll put a couple in here so you can see what I've been looking at. But I think I would just like a really pretty um, viscose floral, not completely set on the colour. I'm going to have a look around. Self-made, I have some really pretty floral viscoses in at the moment, which I'm quite taken by. But yeah, I'm really excited to give this dress a go. I think it's something slightly different. I really like the straight, more fitted style of it as well. It's a little bit different from my usual gathered type midi or maxi dresses. And it's just something else to get my teeth into and try that's a little bit different. So I'm really excited to make the Pippa dress. Let me know if you've made it in the comments below. And then lastly, I decided to include a pair of shorts. Even though I'm not that much of a shorts wearer anymore, we have booked to go away in the summertime to quite a hot country or will be hot at the time that we're going there. I think that you can't really deny how useful a nice comfy elasticated pair of shorts is 
when you're in a hot country and you just want to throw something on when you're around the pool or going to the beach or whatever. So I did have a little look around for some nice comfy shorts and I came across this pattern. So I hope I'm saying this right, it's the Goji Shorts by Deer and Doe. Another pattern that I hadn't actually seen before, I didn't realise that Deer and Doe had this pattern and I liked the style of these. So they are quite a simple style, A-line style pair of shorts <laughs> with an elasticated waist and a drawstring. So there are some patch pockets in the shorts and the short legs are actually panelled as well which makes them a little bit more interesting. You could also make this pattern up as a drawstring skirt as well, which is nice if you do like to wear an elasticated drawstring skirt. I think I'm more of a shorts person than I am a short skirt person. <laughs> so I will probably go for the shorts. So you can make the shorts as a paper bag waist or you can have them as like a standard normal waist as well. So again with these shorts, I think there are so many different fabrics that you could use to make them. Um, the pattern says that they work really well in a light chambray or a viscose twill or something with a little bit of drape in it I think would be really nice. So I'm thinking again that I'd quite like to sew a pair from a viscose linen because I think the linen would be really cool but the viscose will give it that little bit of drape. Another fabric that I think would work really nicely for these shorts is uh, the Tensile Viscose Twill that I actually used for my Jack trench coat. I absolutely love this fabric. It was a pain to sew with because it's so drapey and it shifts around so much. And I think it would work really well for the style of the pattern. These shorts are quite short, but I guess they're quite easy to lengthen down if you did want a bit of extra length there. So I think the way that I would style these shorts is, um, well I think the good thing about them actually is that they could be styled up or down. So they're obviously quite a casual style with the elasticated waist, so really good to wear on holiday around the pool or at the beach or just with like a cami top or an oversized t-shirt tucked in or a ready to wear vest or something like that. Just a really nice casual outfit to wear when you're out and about on holiday. But I do think they could be dressed up as well, so if you did want to wear them to go out I think they would easily be dressed up with like a pair of sandals or a pair of heels or something. So a really good all-rounder pattern I think. So yeah I'm looking forward to that. I don't think, I can't remember if I've actually ever sewn a pair of shorts, even elasticated waist ones. So this again will be something different for me and something new to try so I'm really excited to try that pattern out as well. And then lastly I always have to include a quick bonus um, pattern and I'm going to include a knitting pattern and what I'd like to knit for spring and summertime is actually a knitted vest or cami and a pattern that's caught my eye over on Instagram is a pattern called the outline tank. So this one looks really interesting and kind of scary at the same time. It has a really interesting finish to it in that it's knit in stocking stitch I think as far as I can tell I've only sort of had a brief look at the pattern and admired other versions that I've seen on Instagram but it looks as though it's knit in stocking stitch with thin camisole straps and then when you finish knitting the camisole top it looks as though you have to undo a certain amount of stitches in your finished knitted camisole <laughs> to create a really interesting ladder sort of design to it and yeah, it just looked so interesting to me and as I say a little bit scary but I've seen a few different versions around online and I have to say that I've been heavily influenced by a lovely lady on Instagram called Hello Lavender Designs and she makes such beautiful knitwear. I've been heavily influenced by a lot of the things that she's knit up and I have a lot on my to knit wish list um, thanks to her. <laughs> So yeah, that's something that I am thinking about uh, making for spring and summertime. If not that one, then I would like to knit another knitted vest because I just think they look really pretty and they're definitely coming back, I think. I've seen quite a few knitted vests around on the high street as well. So if you have any patterns to recommend when it comes to knitted vests and camisole tops, then let me know down below. But I am quite taken with this one, as I say, but it would be a bit scary to knit all of that cami and then have to undo stitches at the end. <laughs> Let me know if you've made it because I'd really like to know how it went and um, what you thought of the pattern as well. So that concludes my list of five things that I'd like to say for spring and summer this year. Um, I'd really like to focus on these five things. I can't promise that I won't get distracted or waylaid by other things that come along along the way. 
And I do still have quite a big list of other things to sew as well. But I do think that having a little list like this and also putting it on YouTube does keep me a little bit more accountable to the things that I've um, said that I want to sew and for a good reason as well, because I think they will work really well in my wardrobe. So stay tuned to see how all of those patterns work out. Thanks so much for watching everyone. If you are new to my channel or if you haven't already subscribed, I'd love you to consider doing so. I do post regularly all about sewing, knitting and crafting every Sunday at 8am. If you have enjoyed the video, please do give it a like as well. And I'd love to know in the comments if there are any patterns that have caught your eye for spring and summer this year. Let me know what you're planning to sew. And do let me know as well if you have sewn any of the patterns that I've shared and let me know any hints or tips or tricks or anything that I should look out for along the way. So I'll leave the video here. Take care everyone. Have a lovely day and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.